You might remember J.W.W. Birch from Sejara Books, but what you might not remember, because it wasn't in the books, is where he died, how, and who might have ordered his death. Oh, and how his punishment led to the beginnings of our national anthem. Today's episode starts off with the Pankor Engagement Treaty of 1874, where British dominion will be established over Malay states. The first resident Brit they appointed in Perak was J.W.W. Birch, but according to Franz Swettenham's book, Malay Sketches, he was a bit of a douche. Birch couldn't speak Malay at all, and was unsympathetic towards the Malay customs and traditions. He immediately took away the Malay chief's right of collecting taxes, and stopped them from having slaves. So obviously, within a very short time, the Malay chiefs started getting mildly annoyed. And during the holy month of Ramadan, Sultan Abdullah of Pera and the Malay chiefs had a bunch of mamak meetings about how they couldn't tahan Birch anymore. We will prevail, we must prevail. So they decided that the British residents should be taken care of. At dawn, on the second day of Hari Raya in 1875, Birch came to Pasir Salak to put up notice posters of the British takeover of Pera, and news spread like wildfire. By 10am the same morning, Birch took a break from spreading dominion to take a bath in a bathhouse on the river. Maharaja Lela's followers decided to take the opportunity to get the job done since he wasn't well guarded. They speared him through the wall and after that slashed him on the head with a sword because apparently the Birch look look wasn't ready yet. After Birch's murder, Maharaja Lela and others that were directly involved in the killing were hung. The Sultan and a few Malay chiefs escaped execution and were instead exiled to Seychelles for supporting the murder. But life in Seychelles wasn't that bad. The Sultan played cricket with British officers, collected fine walking sticks, and even grew a few Malaysian fruits. Apparently, that's the reason why Seychelles has bananas today! One day, the Sultan heard a French song called La Rosalie, and he liked it so much that he took the tune and adopted it for the Perak State Anthem. Apparently, Perak's national anthem was the inspiration behind our own national anthem because of the localized and poetic feel from Seychelles, Colonia. Speaking of poetry, Birch's son eventually became the 8th British resident of Perak. But, very different from his father, Ernest Birch had learned. He captured the locals' hearts, learned their language, and respected the Malay chiefs in place. This led to him reorganizing the Perak administration, improving their economy, and even introducing various clubs and sports to their culture. In the end, he was knighted by Queen Victoria for his contributions. Okay lah, at least the happy ending happens one generation later. Anyway, any other orang putes in Malaya you want to know about? Let us know in the comments below, and as usual, keep it here on Chili Sauce for more carnage shoes, tamapadas, and sometimes really white fishballs.